But I'll see cheap as y'all stuff for the beach, yeah. Who needs enemies when you have friends like these? Uh, you, you have a whole entire IFF system, and uh, we it's sim, we just don't fucking use that shit. Anyways, I made a video and said uh, the F-16C is good, the MiG-29 is bad, and I'm sure if I had more followers, someone would be in the comments going, well, actually, you're wrong, you're wrong, you don't understand how things actually work. Uh, the MiG-29 SMT is actually really good if you understand how to use it, and it's like, that is a fair point. The main 29 SMT in Sim is going to be fine. It has good weapons, and the the player base is not like very in tuned with how to fight this thing, and it loses a lot of speed in a turn. But my main problem with the MiG 29 SMT is the same problem I have with most of how War Thunder operates, most of how the game attempts to be realistic, namely that. It's not consistent in its level of realism. So what do I actually mean by that? What I mean is that what War Thunder has essentially done is the way that they model their jet planes, the way they modeled their earlier jet planes, especially starting right, uh, let's say around the F-86, but it scales up to right around the MiG-21, is basically what they did is they took operational G limits and then multiplied them by 1.5 and that is the in-game structural limit, and then if you're playing on mouse, same if you're playing on any other kind of control surface, you kind of get like 80 to 90% of that. You can go back, you can check the math. It's a little bit murky just because what constitutes an operational G limit is uh, subject to change. It's not literally just out of the manual. Gaijin is a little bit flexible in what sources it takes, but if you take if you take this mantra and you scale it all the way up to the F-16, it gets really bad. And the reason it gets really bad is once you get to like the one-to-one -one thrust to weight ratio and you get back to airframes that are like aerodynamically efficient, um, the F-16, when you apply these rules to it, becomes uh, very, very good and everything else becomes very, very bad in comparison. If you watch the first dev server, um, for the F-16 when it initially came out. It, like, it pulled 14 Gs. It didn't lose a lot of speed. It just kind of, like, it just kind of clapped everything. And that's, that is a limitation to the way that Gaijin has decided to model things. The problem with that is that when you model things in a way that is unrealistic, you need to model things in a way that is consistent amongst all the planes because then at least you can keep uh, some semblance of, like, the way things would match up in real life. A lot of American players that were playing the F-16 had a problem with the way the G-limiter was modeled, the way the Flickus was modeled, because the way that Gaijin did it is they didn't model a Flickus, they kind of used their existing parameters to kind of sort of make it work, and like, on initial release, if you went up to a high of like 3,000 meters, your uh, quote-unquote your flickus was limiting you to a 7.5 G turn at high speeds, and that was that is not conducive for the way that Air RB is played, and when everyone else is kind of flying around with 1.5 times their maximum G load, it means that something like the F-16 that was uh, intended to be modeled very, very realistically ends up not having a flight envelope that mimics the other planes in the game. It means that something like the MiG-29 previously could overperform at high speeds in a way that the F-16 just never would, because in War Thunder, we really don't have effective uh, pilot limitations. Um, every pilot in War Thunder is more or less built like Korean Jesus. You can pull 14 Gs realistically without really any of the downsides. Those downsides are not mimicked in the game, and if they were, Air RB, with the way that mousing works, with the way the keyboard works, would be kind of, like, really unplayable for everyone. It would really alter the way that the game feel. And this is the problem that people had, is that the game was not following its own internal logic. In-game, if you are traveling at maximum speed in F-104, you can dart with wings, um, above the speed of sound, you can very easily pull 14 Gs. This is fine, this works more or less because the planes of that generation are more or less, they're thrust limited, they are pilot limited as well, but within the game it shows up as a thrust limitation. You pull too hard in the F-104, you lose your speed very quickly, 
and more or less the matchup plays out exactly the same way the problem is once you get to fourth generation fighters once things get a little bit more aerodynamic again something like the f-16 if you apply the same logic to it becomes blatantly overpowered you could see this in the first dev server where it just kind of clapped the shit out of everything now this 1.5 times multiplier logic was it, it was fine when jets were more or less thrust limited in what their performance could be that's why all of your top tier jets your old ones like your f4e and your mig 21 like they didn't really turn around the corner they just kind of drifted but because of the thrust limitation because they didn't have the thrust they didn't have the airframe to maintain uh, those very high g turns for very long we kind of we noticed it we knew that it was a thing but we didn't really worry about it because at the end of the day, the matchup still remained very similar to what you would expect in real life, or at least as something you could hope to duplicate if you had perfect pilots and perfect uh, control. Because like, War Thunder doesn't do a really good job of modeling uh, the difficulty of pulling off the things that are within the flight envelope, which is, is fine because most of the game is uh, arcade or air RV sim is uh, a very secondary mode. Uh, that is not to say that I don't support adding realistic elements to the game. I think realism is fine as long as it is equally applied to all of the flight models. It would make perfect sense to limit the F-16 to its realistic 9G limit as long as every other plane in the game is not able to instantaneously pull 14 Gs at will with no consequences. But that is not the fact, and that's the problem that people had with the previous F-16 flight model is that it was not consistent with the game's own internal logic. Now, what Gaijin has done to counteract that is they have kind of sort of listened. The F-16 is very, very good now. It can pull very hard at high speeds now. It, it exceeds the 10.5G limit. I think the F-16As will go up to 13 now. That brings that into consistency with like what every other plane can do. But on the other hand, they took the previously pretty decent MiG-29 flight model. It was very good. It was very competitive with the pre-existing F-16 flight model and more or less thrown it in the trash. What they have done is made it bleed a lot of speed at higher angles of attack. It means it loses speed almost instantaneously and it ends up performing in practice like a slightly worse Mirage 2000 which as far as I understand and compared to real life should not be the case and we have taken the inconsistent logic within War Thunder and we just flip-flopped it to the other side of the meta. Allegedly in its current state the MiG-29 SMT is about on par with the F4E as far as dogfighting capabilities go. This is a plane that is, yes, it is heavier than the MiG-29A, and that was to be expected. It was to be expected that it would be worse at dogfighting than the MiG-29A. But, in turn, they have also nerfed the flight models of the MiG-29A to the extent that they are also subpar as far as dogfighting goes. And all of this is not to undermine realism, it's just perplexing because which flight model was realistic to begin with? Is the MiG-29 flight model that loses energy instantaneously the realistic one? Or is the one that retains energy what is not quite as good in the turn rate as the F-16? Is that the realistic one? Or is the realistic flight model whatever one we end up with in the future? I do not know. I cannot look at these charts and be like, yes, this is exactly how it should be. And in the past, I have looked at the charts, and usually in the speeds that War Thunder can see the charts, they do a generally pretty decent job of matching them up. But when it comes to modeling speeds that these planes don't really perform at and at G limits that these planes don't perform at, we have no method of testing. We, we do not know. So a lot of it is up to interpretation. The other thing that War Thunder seems to do with its flight models is that they will try to model one aspect very accurately 
and it will be to the detriment and the flyability of a lot of the other aspects. I think one of the most obvious cases for most people is going to be, as far as Sim goes, is going to be the Spitfire, or as far as RRB goes, is going to be something like the F8F. The F8F was, for by all accounts, supposed to be a pretty maneuverable fighter in real life, and within the game it is basically unplayable just due to the fact that the rudder um, more or less stops being effective in the way that it interacts with the mouse aim in a way that other planes just don't experience. You compare the F8F to something like the N1K, a plane that doesn't have a lot of data on it, and the N1K can deflect its rudder and get full rudder authority at pretty much any speed, which means that like in mouse aim, the N1K2 even though it's 6.3 or even though it's 6.0, I don't remember exactly what it is, ends up being a lot more effective than a plane that is, by all accounts, much, much superior. Now, what does this have to do with the gameplay footage? Well, not really a lot, because I just came out with a video saying that I think the F-16C is the, the new meta plane. I think the AIM-9M is better. But that does not mean that the MiG-29 SMT is completely ineffective. The R-73s do give it a good number of options. Um, at the same time, the number of options that it has, really beyond the first turn where it bleeds all its speed, are very, very limited. And all of those options really hinge on manipulating the effectiveness of the R-73. Now. I don't know why Gaijin has decided to change the flight model. I don't know if they found new information that said that this would be more realistic than what previously existed, but either way, you can't look at this and not cast doubt upon the fact that they had decided that one version is more realistic than the other. And because there's no transparency on the English-speaking side of the world, at least as far as Gaijin interacts with the English-speaking world, we don't really know. We can't tell the logic behind the developer's changes. We just know that we went from one patch to the other, where one plane went from being very, very strong to being very, very mediocre, and then the other plane has just been more or less buffed into oblivion. Um, in reality, the, the, the sensible thing to do would have been to just treat both planes consistently as far as the in-game logic goes, and if the MiG-29 is getting a 1.5 times maximum G-Force buff, then just give the same buff to the F-16. It would be fine, but instead what they have done is they have given the 1.5 times buff to the F-16 and then completely nerf the underlying MiG-29 flight model for reasons that, because there is no transparency, we really do not know why. So while the MiG-29 SMT has better weapons than the other MiG-29 and has arguably like the best variety of weapons in the game, you have a flight model that is either perfectly realistic and this is the way that things should be, or a flight model that has been significantly nerfed because it was overperforming in the previous patch. And because we don't know, people are going to interpret what they want to interpret. My gut instinct, my understanding based on talking to people that have at least flown the F-16 in real life and have matched up against the 29, is that this fight is supposed to be fairly close, and Gaijin has taken it to the extent where if you hold a lag turn the F-16 of any AOA, you just kind of automatically win. And I don't think that is consistent, and that is sad. Anyways, that's going to be a Beer Thunder video. If you like what I do, and if you want to support me, subscribe, like, promote me in your Discord channels, um, and I will keep doing this until I get bored of it.